or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Hey, it's Dave and Josh. Welcome to the Study Bible portion of the Video Bible. So let's jump right in and look what's happening in this verse. So here we have a large ship, and I like this because that's what the verse is talking about. It doesn't say dinghy or small boat. It actually says ship. And so we've done this to scale, we, we, which shows you how large and mammoth the ship is because you can see the captain or the pilot of the ship, and he's actually at the helm steering it. It was interesting, you can see how small the steering wheel is. How he's only got one hand, and the rudder underneath the ocean is small too. So it really captures what's going on in this verse. Josh, what did you have to add to that? Yeah, we said last time that James is using multiple pictures to remind us of a very important truth that is we have amazing power and influence with the words that we say. God has made us in his image, and he's made us like him. And when he speaks, it's powerful and effective. And he's given us the power uh, in our words as well to influence and to affect people. So last week we talked about how bridle, a bit in a horse's mouth, steers a whole animal. This week we're looking at the example of a ship, another example in the, the reader's minds in the first century that would have said, yeah, we know exactly what it's like to be on the sea, to be fishing, to doing those kinds of things. And last week we talked about how these are really complementary images. So rather than just repeat ourselves from the last episode, uh, we want to, to look a little bit under the hood at how these verses can take shape in our lives in a modern context. And one, you know, I was sharing this story with you, and I've heard this kind of story over and over and over again in my life. But I was talking to my son at one point, and he said, Dad, I, you know, I, I don't mean to be rude, but, and I just, I just said, hey, buddy, uh, just, let's just stop right there. I said, is what you're going to say, is it going to be rude? And he said, well, no. And I said, okay, well, then one of two things here. If what you're going to say is going to be rude, then don't say it. And if it's not rude, then you don't need to qualify it with, I don't mean to be rude. And I think so often in our culture, we all know how that's like, where we see people we see ourselves at times saying something inappropriate and mean or rude or gossiping or whatever, but we qualify it with, well, I don't want to be rude. And somehow that makes it okay. <laughs> As though just acknowledging, I know I'm about to do something makes it okay. And part of what James is showing us is the wisdom of knowing when to say things, when not to say things. Because once a word leaves our mouth, there's no taking it back. I mean, you and I know what it's like to say things to our wives or to our kids or to friends or to coworkers. And as the words coming out, we're almost like, I just grabbing for them. Can I pull that back in? So the effect that our words have, we all know what that's like. And part of what James is trying to show us here is that we can live in such a way uh, by grace and by the power of the Spirit that we have the wisdom and the maturity and the self-control and the power to say what needs to be said. And as things crop up that are about to take shape in verbal form, we can harness that and say, no, that doesn't need to be said. Uh, I don't need to qualify. Well, I'm about to be rude, but I just want you to know that I know it, so it's okay. It's like, no. What kind of world is that? I mean, imagine, you know, we were talking earlier about social media. Imagine how different interactions on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all these other, you know, platforms would be if we took seriously the call to use our tongues in a way that built up and not just tear down. Yeah, I think what you're getting at, which is really important, is the intent of what's being said. And so it's like there is walking towards something with trepidation and it's saying, like, hey, I really love you, and I mean this well. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, there's okay to qualify that, right? Like, like my heart is in a place where I really love you, and I want to tell you this, versus I'm about to hurt you, get ready. 
But don't worry, I know it in advance. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That's right. And so I think that really talks about the intent of our heart. And that's the great thing is we, you know, you call someone on the phone or if you've been left on hold with a telemarketer. And we always try to like reverse engineer these conversations and these situations like, well, this person was thinking that or they were thinking this and they were doing this chess move and they were going to take it over here and I was going to be ready for them over there. And it's like, okay, whatever. You know, like we don't know what the other person is thinking, but the good news is we always know what we're thinking, right? We always know with our heart. And there's a dear friend of mine that always asked the question, was I trying to be interested or was I trying to be interesting? Mm-hmm. And I asked him about that. I said, that's great. Like, what does that mean? He says, well, like the person at the counter, they were telling me something. I was paying for my gas recently, and they were telling me about it, and they were having a hard day. And I was said, you know, was I, tr- was I, I'd asked myself, was I really trying to be interested in the other person, or was I trying to be interesting and talk, be funny and tell about how I couldn't get the gas pump to work? And it's all about me. Right. So I, that's what I hear you saying about the tongue here with building up or tearing down is, is it all about the other person or is it all about us? And it really comes down to just that. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, th- that's a that's a great point there that the words God has given us, the power God has given us in our words is immense, but he's given it to us for a purpose. And we wouldn't have to read the Bible long to realize that purpose is not self-centered. It's not about us. He's given us the power of words in order to accomplish his purposes, which are to speak life into the world. We know ultimately in proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, of inviting people to follow Jesus, of providing comfort and encouragement for everybody we meet by speaking words of life. You know, you mentioned earlier the distinction between being rude and speaking the truth in love. And that's a good distinction because what this passage, these verses are not telling us, ooh, just dance around things. Don't ever say anything that hurts somebody because there's times when love says, I need to be honest with you. But again, how I say something is as important as what I've said. And that's part of what James is trying to remind us here is I know I'm prone to be a little bit of a bull in a china shop. And this is a great check for me to go, just because it was true doesn't mean it was helpful. There's a way to speak the truth and love. And so just trying to honor that idea of, I don't just have the right to say things. I have the command to speak the truth in love. We see Jesus being honest with people at times, and you're like, wow, that that kind of hurts. Yet he is also the God who is love. And so he always speaks what's necessary and needful. And by God's grace and the power of the Spirit, uh, we can use our words in the same way. Amen. The Spirit can totally help us with that. So we can pray to the Spirit. Well, that's it for us. Please stay tuned for an important message about the work we're doing and how you can get involved in the video Bible. Hey, we need your help. We have the ability to put this into 30 languages, and all we need is the funding and we need you to prayerfully consider supporting us. So please watch that message. Thank you. I have known great personal pain and brokenness in my life. And this, this is the only thing that ever gave me any peace because it pointed me to Jesus. And that is the peace that surpasses all understanding, right? Um, but sadly, this is not accessible to all people people that can't read, people that are dyslexic, people that are elderly that have a hard time concentrating. There's just so much that can't access the Bible. And so we need to put it into a format that's more accessible. I and mean, how we plan to do that is, is we're going to illustrate every single verse of this, and then we're going to put the audio track on the top of it, and we're going to create the video Bible. What is amazing about that is that I've spent 14 years working in an international ministry doing languages, And so I know a lot about the world of ministry. And not only can we create this Bible for you and for your family, what's also amazing is the publishers of this Bible have given us the audio track in over 30 languages. And so you can help me by doing a crowdfunding for your family, but I can actually get this to Iran, okay? I can put this in a video Bible in Farsi. 
Okay, that's mind boggling. And we've been working on this um, after hours as a moonlighting project for well over a year. And we're ready to do this. Okay, this is a doable thing, but we need the financing. Okay, so we need we need a thousand people to give twenty dollars a month. You can go to the home page, go to videobible.com, and you can learn all about that. But it's just really amazing what God has done. He's brought together all these great videographers and and uh, theologians and artists, and just just amazing, right? And He's done it through a broken person. Um, and so we can do this together, right? It's like, um, it's just really, really exciting. And um, we'd love for you to be part of this journey and just, just come along with us. So go to videobible.com, check it out, uh, share it with your friends, like it, and um, just, you know, follow us along the journey and um, we'll be glad to just have you. Thank you.